안녕하세요. For watching today, 감사합니다. That's what they say in Seoul, Korea. Um, last, I want to mention this one more time. We have open to pastors, leaders, wives, workers, an intensive on practical lessons for Christian ministry. It's going to be at the church in beautiful downtown Brooklyn on October the 16th, 17th, and 18th. From Monday night to 16th, you get a dinner. You have one session, one hour. Then two in the morning on, on oh, good thing, Christian counseling. What are secrets about counseling? Uh, preparation of sermons. Uh, then a lunch. Then another session in the early afternoon about another vital subject. And then the prayer meeting at night. And the Brooklyn Tabernacle congregation, that are those that are there, pray for you and your ministry and your church. Then Wednesday, two sessions in the morning. And by 12 noon, adios, muchachos. We're done. It will help you. You know, if you don't have wisdom, you can be sincere and pray and read the Bible. But if you lack wisdom in your ministry, in your church, you can be on a treadmill. I've seen that a thousand times, know it personally myself. Uh, wisdom builds the house, Proverbs 7. Wisdom builds the house. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Wisdom. Oh, no, I, I'm a Christian. I have everything. Why would James say if anyone lacks wisdom? He's writing to Christians. So just go to the Brooklyn Tabernacle website and sign up, get involved. Okay. He's now with the witch of Endor, Endor, Saul is. He's so out of it. Uh, then the woman asks the witch, whom shall I bring up for you? From the dead, supposedly. Bring up Samuel, the prophet who had died. When the woman saw Samuel, now here's controversy about this passage. She cried at the top of her voice and said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up uh, out, up out of the earth. What does he look like, he asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. So the commentators are disagreement about this. Certainly, it seems, it's impossible to believe that her power could bring up the dead because witches can't bring up the dead. Otherwise, we'd be paying money to go see great-grandma, Mary, um, have a little 30 minutes with her by going through some witch. That, we're not to consult them. They're bogus. So then what's happening? Because is that Samuel or fake Samuel or demonic Samuel? Well, from what Samuel's going to say, most commentators agree, God overruled her evil thing and let Samuel appear to Saul to give him a final ta-ta, bye-bye. Listen. Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams, so I have called on you to tell me what to do. Now, some people who hold the opposite say, no, this is her work. It's a demonic thing, but God's using the demonic appearance to speak to Saul. Others say, no, it can't. That God wouldn't use demons to do that. Nothing to argue about. Samuel said, why do you consult me now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? Woo! Lord, save us from that. The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to one of your neighbors, to David, because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites. The Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me, as in muerte, dead. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistine. Now, that's a message to give you a wake-up call. 
So some people say, it says Samuel, so it must have been Samuel. Then there's other sentences that sound like, would Samuel be talking like that? Then he says, you'll be with me when you die. Well, would Samuel be in the same place Saul would be? No. There's disagreement among the experts, and I'm not an expert. But I know this, Jesus is alive, and we're Christians, and he's the son of God, and we're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. That's the important thing. Okay, so this is a message. However it came, God is speaking to, to Saul. Saul wishes he never would have made that call. You know, it's like one time I said to my wife early on in the ministry, how do you think I'm doing? And she said, do you really want to know? <laughs> I knew something not so pleasant was coming, but she was right. I wasn't doing well at all. So Saul dialed that number of the Bruhita, the witch of Endor, and he wanted to hear a word from Samuel. Well, he got a word from Samuel from God, put it any way you want, and it was this, it's over. Now that makes your heart beat. You can be alive on this earth, it seems. Whether you call it in the New Testament, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, but you can go beyond the beyond, even with an all-merciful God. Now, if someone is longing for God or thinking about their life and their soul, that means uh, uh, they have not committed the unpardonable sin. The Spirit's still working with them. But here in this Old Testament example, my, my, my. Well, you want a message, uh, King Saul? Here's your message. It's over. You disobeyed God. You grieved him, turned your back on him. He gave you 10 million chances to turn. You didn't listen to any one of them. He gave you much privilege, much blessing. And what did he get back from you? Nothing. You turned your back on him. There are verses in that Old Testament dispensation. When you've done this and done this and turned your back and served your idol, when you call, I won't answer. I'm not sure how that totally works out except this. I don't want to go near it. How about you? Let's be humble today. Confess our sins and say, God, speak. Your servant is listening. See you on Monday. Bye-bye. Thank you.